Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear distinguished guests, it is my honor to welcome you here at the international, 11th International Silk Road Conference Innovations in Business, Education and Sciences. Um, the organizer of the conference is International Black Sea University and partner organizations of the conference are American Chamber of Commerce in Georgia, International University for Business and Economics in China and Georgian um, uh, International Chamber of Commerce um, of Industry in Georgia. Um, it is my honor to invite uh, our Rector, Professor Ilyas Chiloglu, to uh, welcome our guests. Distinguished guests, dear uh, conference participants, dear students, it is my pleasure to welcome you uh, to 11th uh, Silk Road uh, Symposium. Uh, this year we are going to discuss uh, very important issues, uh, innovations, innovations in uh, business, innovations in education and science. Uh, this is very uh, popular, you know, as you all know nowadays, and we every day hear uh, talks and discussions about this issue. Innovations in business, you know, uh, we all know that now from here, from Georgia, you can reach, uh, you know, any destination and get the, get the products, right? U.S. to Georgia, I think you all know. You know, you can buy products from Amazon or eBay and order and, you know, get the products like a uh, few weeks here in Tbilisi. This is the result of, you know, the technology, the innovations. Yesterday, there was a student, business student, Georgi, I don't know if he is here, who visited me and uh, asked, you know, a sport that he developed a, a new software program for schools where, you know, schools can reach uh, students and, in fact, Georgi is here back, yeah. Uh, okay, raise your hand, Georgi. Yeah, he's here. And ask us, you know, about, you know, the, the health and sport. This is innovation, you know, he, he invented or he developed or he's now working on that. And we know that there are many students doing these kind of things. And as a university, we are trying to, uh, trying to somehow support and help and inc at least encourage them to do these kind of works. This is very important. Well, the, the thing is actually the, the mentality. You know, not for uh, young generation, but for maybe old generation. You know, you see the professors maybe still suffer to use the computers in the classes, right? I don't think here, but I know many other universities and the professors really use the old way to teach. And it is very difficult to change the mentality of those people. Yesterday, uh, several, you know, recently I, I watched a video where President Obama speaks to school kids. And he advises kids to not just to uh, use the, uh, you know, the computer, the iPhone, and other stuff. Not simply to download prepared, you know, the applications, but to do, you know, to uh, write a new program, okay, and contribute. Not just use it, but you do yourself something more. Develop it. Don't be just users. This is a mentality that, you know, he, he, he understands the, how important it is and he advises kids to, to do something more. And he's saying, you know, nobody was born as a computer science, but they, they learned later on and they studied. And you are, you are the, the kids then can uh, improve your skills in, in computer science and uh, become a computer science in the future. future. This is a very good message to kids, school kids, right? And there is another uh, video that I watched where the prime minister of one country is talking about the technology and innovations and he's saying, you know, there is like something now clouds. Clouds, I think he means uh, Bluetooth. There is something clouds, you put there everything and you get something from there there are websites, you know, huge information in. But don't use it just, you know, do not consider how it happens. Okay? 
Do not consider how it happens. You know, if you think deeply, you may become crazy. I mean, that's the, the mentality, you know, uh, you see among these two guys, right? But I'm sure many of you in this auditorium understand this and how important it is to work on innovation. And now Georgia is like, you know, uh, developing very much on that sphere. And then we have recently opened in Tatsminda, you know, uh, the Techno, Techno Park, where, where people go and work, you know, in, in, space, in, in free space areas. And as any university, and we decided with business faculty for, for next year to have a space, you know, free space where, where students can, can go and work and uh, work on their innovations. These are all businesses, but also innovation in education. And then we try to implement new things. You know, we recently implemented uh, in, in, in master program, for instance, where two professors, one teach theory and another teach a practical part, and two professors teaching one subject. And we try to implement also, and we implement it in several courses, you know, one foreigner, one domestic professor teaching. And also there are others, you know, we are applying teacher partnership program where two professors enter each other's classes and explain what lacks they faced in the classes, you know, and then after classes they discuss each other, you know, and better to improve this part because uh, blah, 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 right? Uh, this kind of uh, innovations, uh, of course, uh, will be continued, uh, you know, and then I ho I'm sure after the conference we will benefit your su such suggestions and, and new trends, maybe, I, I'm, I don't know. And I, I am, uh, and then I would like to uh, welcome again the guests coming from maybe other countries. And now here in Georgia, I think you will experience a wonderful two or three days. And what I told guests from China, he, the professor, the vice president of the University, International University of Finance, in Finance and Economics, where, where he mentioned that you know he he take uh, they take like. 60 students from 100 million province. Six zero students from 100 million uh, province. I mean, the very competitive university, very wonderful university. And we have, as you know, an exchange program with this university and there are students now studying there. This is also an innovation some part, you know, like several years ago you could not guess, imagine that, you know, there would be students studying in China and, and then Chinese students come here and study here. But it's, it's another, uh, another issue, of course. And then I, I, I'm, uh, I would like to express again uh, for comers uh, and then advise them to feel and to see as much as possible all around Georgia because this is a really wonderful landscape and I'm sure you will enjoy being here and I told again the, the guests from China that you know we, we, have, we have been uh, visiting different places with two days the second day is here you know once a person comes to Georgia they again come to Georgia and I'm sure he will be again back to Georgia uh, I, I wish you good luck and uh, good uh, sessions uh, and of course during the days we will meet, we meet again each other uh, thank you. Thank you for coming and listening. It is great pleasure for me to welcome all of you at this notable event organized by the Secret Scientific Research Institute in the collaboration with the Public Service Development Agency in Georgia, University of International Business and Economics in China, and American Chamber of Commerce in Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Secret Scientific Research Institute was founded in 2003 as an important unit within the structure of IBSU. The aim of the institute resembles to the aim of secret that started in China in the third century BC and extended till the heart of the Europe till the end of the 16th century AD. As far as we know from histor historical sources, from the Ibn Battuta, from Marco Polo, 
and literary works and travel notes of a lot of writers had been carried commercial goods, cultural values through the Silk Road by the camel caravans from countries to countries during the 18th centuries. Silk Road Institute has similar aim. The aim is to be a platform through, through which modern scientific caravans would carry intellectual capitals, innovative findings, and share them with the international community. For the fulfillment of this aim, Silk Road Scientific Research Institute initiated so far 11 international conferences on different topics. Today, we are, we are hosting 145 participants from 19 countries. Besides, I would like to give you a brief information about Silk Road Institute scientific activities conducted in previous years. So, as I mentioned, we uh, conducted 11 international Silk Road conferences so far. And of course, we have published the production. So we hosted at our university, at our university from different countries, uh, hundreds of professors. And as you, see, as you see, we hosted at our university professors, associated professors, doctors, researchers, scientists. Here you see the countries presented uh, our professors, associated professors, doctors in our conferences. Also, our uh, these conferences are dedicated on different topics. As you see, the first topic, major topic was globalization, and second topic was business, and the other topics uh, are mentioned in our conferences. The results of our conferences have been, uh, were published in different uh, proceedings. And last one, uh, ten, sorry for, and last one, these 10th international conference pro proceedings are available on our website. And also, Silk Road Research Institutes uh, organize different uh, scientific activities, programs, events in book fair, academic seminars, scientific festivals, scientific events, and mentorship programs, and visiting scholars, and more activities are organized by the Silk Road Research Institute. Also, our institute encourages our uh, scientists to publish their scientific works. As you see, we have already published uh, uh, different books, different production on behalf of Silk Road Institutes. Also, our institute collaborates, collaborates with the uh, uh, journals which have been published at our university. Our university published five international journals uh, which uh, have been published in English. And besides these activities, our uh, Silk Road Institute uh, supports uh, collaboration with the centers which were established in our university recently. We have nine research uh, centers in our university. As you see, they are mentioned on the screen. Also, as I mentioned, uh, International Silk Road Institute organized different seminars dedicated to raising our uh, doctorate students, master students, also uh, to bachelor students. And for this purpose, we are inviting professors from different countries. Our uh, Silk Road Research Institute will organize in September the first international conference on history, art, literature, and culture in South Caucasus in the Bilixi region. So I would like to invite all of you to participate in this conference. And I, I would like to wish you successful presentation and productive discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'm really proud to invite next speaker uh, to the stage. She is one of our really successful graduates, uh, Cecily Vedzadze, uh, who is the, the head of uh, Innovations Management and Research Division of Public Service Development Agency. Please, Cecily. <laughs>
First of all, I would like to thank International Black Sea University and the university management for inviting me and for uh, uh, the opportunity for the uh, Public Service Development Agency of the Ministry of Justice of Georgia to participate in such an amazing and exciting conference uh, here in Tbilisi. Um, today I want to talk uh, a little bit about our role and how we encourage and how we support the business environment, how we support and how we bring in the innovation into our everyday uh, work and also how we can encourage youth in rural areas to um, learn more technologies, technologies uh, uh, learn and get in, uh, insights about best practices internationally. Um, so uh, we started with um, uh, UNDP two years ago uh, to establish the um, Innovations Lab here at the Public Service Development Agency. Uh, our Innovations Lab mainly focuses on uh, like public service development, provision of different expertise all around the world. Uh, we bring in experts from US, from um, uh, different countries, from UK, from Denmark, all over the place to support local governments, uh, national governments, and also provide some kind of expertise for the businesses who are interested in different innovations and innovative approaches in service provision. Uh, so we develop new products and services. We work with, uh, as I mentioned, with different uh, government agencies and local agencies. Also, we work with different businesses. Uh, if, for example, they want to develop different databases for their internal information, um, if they want to create some kind of new documents for their uh, staff or anything that is connected with innovation, with new products, new services, and better environment. Uh, I want to present a few projects so that you are more or less aware of how we work internally within the Public Service Development Agency. Uh, so the one of the first product, pro projects that we conducted as a service lab was the Idea Box. Uh, so the agency has about 1,300 employees all around Georgia in different parts of Georgia. So we thought that, uh, okay, we have an innovation lab, we have our team, and we get some idea generation, and like we do new products, but what if our employees from different parts of Georgia have a good and creative and exciting ideas that they want to share with management, and how do we provide the opportunity for them to share these ideas with us? So we developed an idea box software, uh, so now every employee can log into this software and post their ideas, like we post a status on Facebook or something similar, social media. So they can post their ideas and other employees can evaluate these ideas. Uh, they can comment on these ideas and they can make adjustments to the idea or suggest new ideas. Uh, so this is how we keep our employees and our staff members connected to innovation and how we involve them in the process of innovation within the agency. Um, uh, yep. Technologies are good, but sometimes they don't cooperate. So this is another opportunity for development. Um, so. Uh, as I mentioned, we're working with uh, different public entities as well. So one of the successful cooperation was with 112 Emergency Services, uh, where for two years they had this problem that they could not offer services for deaf and hearing impaired. Um, because they, there was some miscommunication, the deaf union requested one type of service, the 112 emergency services did not have resources to provide such one. So what we did was we sat together and we decided to work on this together. So another approach is to bring in the end user in the, user pro in the service provision process and in the service development process. So we brought the deaf union with their members and talked with, to them for three days. We worked on the actual process, actual service for three days, and then we came out with a service that was acceptable for 112 and that was acceptable for the DIF union as well. This uh, particular service resulted that um, 112 won the uh, best innovative uh, service among 82 countries uh, presented at the uh, conference organized by the emergency number union of Euro European Union. 
Um, so another important project and another important approach that I want to present today is community services. Uh, so in big cities like Tbilisi, Batumi, Kutaisi and others, there are more opportunities to be um, able to like get internet or go online. Uh, there are more opportunities for trainings. Uh, a lot of universities and institutions offer different kind of uh, courses, workshops, and so on. For, so for those living in these big cities, it's easier to get more information, to learn stuff. Uh, and even like, for example, English is more accessible for those living in big cities. So uh, Ministry of Justice of Georgia decided that uh, more opportunities should be offered for those living in rural areas, in big villages, or the smaller cities. So uh, we developed a project called Community uh, Centers. So um, this project uh, means that we have uh, spaces in uh, different uh, regions. So we have about 35 different community services, the uh, community centers uh, in different regions. So um, actually, this is how the, our community uh, centers look like. They offer free internet. They offer uh, conference rooms for up to 30 or 40 people, depends on the setting of the room. Uh, they offer free online and offline library with a lot of books and a lot of subscriptions to different international libraries. And also we offer different services like business registration or uh, property registration and so on. So with these centers, we support the youth uh, to get information, to learn more, and we conduct different trainings like English language trainings or CV trainings or like different stuff that can be done uh, within the village or outside. And also we support local businesses by providing an opportunity to register your idea, register your business right there without leaving your home uh, city or without leaving your village. Uh, another innovation that we brought was Express Community Centers. So, okay, we had up to 35 community centers in big villages, but what about those living in remote areas? They also have brilliant ideas that they want to start. So we brought uh, the Express Community Centers. So now more than a thousand villages all around Georgia receive different public services and they can register their land, uh, their business, uh, their idea without leaving the village. Uh, recently, uh, we had the conference, and I want to talk about uh, how government, business, and academia can cooperate on different issues. So in Georgia, one of the uh, uh, painful issues that we have is road safety, where we have a lot of car accidents, and a lot of them, unfortunately, result in deaths, So and the waste management. So in December, we had the conference where we brought... Um, different ministries like Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Infrastructure. We brought different uh, private organizations who work on ra road safety and waste management, NGOs who are interested in this topic, and academia with students and professors. And I would like to use the opportunity and thank International Black Sea University for sending such an amazing student to participate in this conference. And Finally, we, after two days, we got the result that we came up with an action plan on how to reduce the accidents on roads and how to increase the awareness about the environmental issues in educational institutions and in government institutions as well as private sector. Uh, so these are like some photos that I wanted to share uh, from the conference and um, the methods that we used, and if you want to look up, uh, it's more for the students, if you want to look up the methods are design thinking, behavioral science, reverse engineering, and yes, we are using engineering in public service uh, development and provision, and this is how we bring uh, innovation into uh, public service development, how we cooperate with uh, different businesses and uh, educational institutions. Um, I hope uh, the information provided was interesting. I'm sure that even the community centers uh, and other uh, projects like Ideabox might be interesting for, uh, in universities and other organizations. Um, so I'll be happy to answer if any of you have any questions. Uh, other than that, once again, I would like to thank International Black Sea University for this opportunity to speak in front of you and would like to wish a successful conference and I'm sure that it will be a great event uh, during the days planned. Thank you.
respected re uh, rector uh, uh, Silogun, uh, dear colleagues, dear guests, uh, dear students, uh, good morning. This is really my great honor to be invited to give a keynote speech. And uh, for my university, the University of International Business and Economics is also very, very honored to co-organize this the conference, the 11th Secret uh, uh, International Conference. And today I will give uh, uh, a talk about uh, the, the Secret Road, which was formally uh, initiated after 10 years when this uh, Secret Road Research Institute was established. Uh, this, in China, we call it the uh, One by One Road uh, Initiative. Um, uh, actually, uh, we are part of uh, this, the, uh, uh, the, the event. Um, well, this, the Silk Road came from, from China, China Silk, and through the merchant to the Europe. But in Chinese literature, we don't have this term, this terminology. It's coined by a German scientist in the uh, later 19th century. Um, but it has a long history, well, over 2,000 years. Uh, even, you know, uh, in Afghanistan, uh, before, well, uh, the 11th century, uh, we, we have the trade from Afghanistan to, to China. Um, so we, we can see that the, uh, in the, the second century from Europe and also from um, China, there is a, a business link. So the, um, the license for, for this, the benefits, benefits of trade. And uh, well, if we have peace, we have commerce and we have development. If there is no peace, business was destroyed, and then all of us suffered. So, well, the barrier to the trade is the hot barrier, and also sub sub barrier is by the the policy by the regime. And with the industrialization and uh, modernization, we can see well the the rising of the Europe and also, later on, the rising of North America. And, uh, and uh, well, in the last century, while well, China experienced, well, these uh, um, openness and, and the reform. And uh, now, you know, now China is the, uh, a hot word, and uh, since this has the world's largest population, just direct to say, well, for our university, we, every year, we recruit students from, you know, national wild, and about 10 million young people apply for the university. And for our university, we only recruit uh, 2,000 from all over China. And we pick the best students from each province, like in Henan province, with 100 million population, we only give them 60 quarters. So the students in that province compete yeah, to, to get the opportunity to enter into our university. Um, not China, we have, well, 1,375 million population. And China now is world, the number one uh, trade country. We are largest importer and uh, also a largest exporter. And, um, and now China, the economic size well, number two in the world, next to the United States. Now China's share in the, in the global uh, e economy is uh, about uh, 14%. And before China reform, in the 1972, China was just 1.5%. So image, well, within 30 years, China increased by 10 times. And uh, if adjusted to the purchasing power parity, China is, not, is the number one uh, in the world. Uh, China is you know, still ranked in the low middle income uh, country for last year, well, our per capita GDP is uh, 7,630 uh, US dollars. And uh, China in the, in the process of, uh, well, the urbanization, 
Uh, now, about the 33.59% uh, of people live in rural areas, and the others live in the city. Every year, 1% of Chinese move from uh, rural to city. 1%, what does it mean? 1%, 30 million. 30 million, 30 million for the urbanization. And, and then, so the Human Development Index, so China was still left behind, the 91%. So for this big country, for, for this big country, um, yeah, so either well, this is the Chinese way or Chinese model, but uh, actually we just share our experience. What the most characteristics of China is the market economy, the socialist market economy. Combine the socialism, collectivism with the market economy, and then we have a, a authoritative government, the central government, the part of the government. This is the uh, subsystem of the Chinese model. It's the uh, social organization which has the high mobility of the society and uh, economic development. So uh, pursue the development and try to m maintain the balance of uh, the. Uh, uh, stability, development, and reform, and openness. So, so then the government played its role as a neutrality government, and uh, China's the outlook to propose that's the uh, openness and cooperation. So this is a, uh, you understand China, how to manage uh, this country, and uh, while the Chinese economy, like, um, the, the, the foreign investment to China, you, you can see from 1990, after China experienced the political crisis, and then China further open this door, you can see that China is the largest you know, the emerging economy to attract foreign investment, and China from the year 2004, China's outward investment, uh, we call it a global strategy for Chinese enterprise, to invest in, in the world, and uh, I, I suppose the more, more Chinese investors come to Georgia, come in, in, in Ibilis, then you can see the trend. And uh, according to the latest statistics, the first, from January to, to April this year, China's outward investment increased 70% uh, uh, in this, the first uh, four months. Uh, so that's the uh, Chinese leader, Mr. Xi Jinping. She, he formally initiated one belt, one road initiative. That's on land, they call it the economic Silk Road Belt from Asia to Europe. So that you can see cover Asia, Middle Asia, and uh, East Asia, Middle Asia, and Europe. Um, and the, the, this is the, the, the belt on land, and also the um, Maritime, maritime, that's the, from the Pacific to the Indian Ocean to Europe, or Pacific to South uh, Oceania, and also Latin America. So, so, so China formally uh, launched this, the, uh, the vision and the action on jointly built Silk Road economic belt and the 21st century maritime Silk Road. So this is the document to guideline the China's the further openness to the, to the world. Um, so this is a, well, a map joined by my colleagues. This is not the public, uh, uh, formally published uh, uh, map. And uh, according to this, you can see that from, from, especially from China and then to the West, to the Europe, and uh, you, you can see where, where Georgia just is here. So this is also on the, on the road for, for China to propose the, 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 the development roads. So that's, we have the core, the three ways, the north, the middle, and the south. So, so Georgia is on the middle way, the middle road for, for China's you know, proposed the one by one road. And uh, so you, you can see, see this. Um, so for, for this initiative, we cover 4.4 billion population. That's covered. 63% of the world, pop, uh, world population, and about 21 trillion uh, of GDP. That means 29% of the world, the total. That means for this area, 63% of the population, but only have 29% of, uh, of the economic size. That's the, well, there is a big room for, for development, for put, is the potential, potential. Um, so this is uh, the document, and uh, I, I, I just you know, very, very briefly uh, um, 
พระลายดิสีอ this so usually this the documents and uh, so you can see on the land to China to to Russia the, the, the so-called uh, New Asia Europe Bridge the land bridge and then middle from China to Middle Asia and then to West Asia to, and then to Mediterranean and then to Europe and to the south from Southeast Asia and uh, South Asia then to, through the India Ocean and to the to the west and also well to the Africa. So China has this uh, also a strategy to cooperate Sino Africa. Well, the uh, uh, cooperation regime we have established this. Um, so the, for Chinese, you know, Chinese uh, ideas about the uh, Silk Road, about this, the cooperation, that's the five points, that's five principles. What is the line with the purpose of the principle of the United Nations to pursue the peace and development and open for the cooperation, open for cooperation and uh, create the uh, harmonious and inclusive to all the stakeholders and uh, follow follows the market operation, follow market operation, the win-win solution for this cooperation and seek mutual benefits, mutual benefits. So this is the five principles for China's Silk Road Initiative. And uh, for the um, framework, this is uh, also, that's uh, the, the follow the idea, the concept is the peace and the cooperation, openness and the inclusiveness and the mutual learning and the mutual benefit. And then create the three, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, the communities shared interest and is the uh, uh, destiny and responsibility. So three, uh, destiny, community, and responsibility, community, and the shared interest uh, co community. Um, they see um, the two ends that the, through this signal, the, the, oh, from the uh, vibrant East Asia and then to the developed European. Um, so all well, countries with huge potential for the economic development will evolve, would like to evolve to this. And uh, we can see this, the, uh, the three routes on land in the north, middle, and south. And two ways at the sea, that's the uh, through uh, South China goes China's coast to Europe through the South China Sea to the India Ocean or through the China Sea to the South Pacific. So this is the, uh, something like that. And uh, the uh, five, uh, for, for the uh, cooperation, that's the five dimensions. First is the policy coordination. So they cannot implement the, the, the neighbor, the policies, the, the policies should coordinate. And especially the currently, in the world, it's the time for the rules to be resettled. So there's the uh, policy coordination at the uh, bilateral level, regional level, and multilateral level, or global level. And then facility connectivities. Facilities, that's the, uh, uh, the road transportation, well, the uh, telecommunication and also the energy, um, the, and then the trade is unimpended trade. That's the uh, pros, the uh, uh, free trade, financial integration, financial integration, and we need well the um, to the development finance to 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 raise the fund for the first development, and the uh, final objective is the people-to-people -people bond, people-to-people -people exchange. So this is a, uh, this is the, this is, and uh, we can see that rules is the chaos, the rules. Uh, in, in, East, in Asia, we are now, we work hard to attract, attract to the FTAP, free trade area to, of the Asia Pacific. And China launched the, uh, it's the negotiation with Europe, the, and also the first states, that's the uh, trade negotiation with Europe, TTIP. In the Pacific, they are the TPP. And for China, we have, well, we, now we develop the uh, regional cons uh, close economic partnership, that's the, uh, for East Asia and, uh, and uh, China, South Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and India. 
And uh, for China with the Georgia, well, now we start to the, the negotiation about to establish the free trade agreement, the signing free trade agreement. And the feasibility study is conducted by our, uh, our university, by our colleagues. So this is uh, the rules and <coughs> sorry, the uh, facilities, connectivities, and uh, construct the road, the fast train, and the expressway, and uh, the, well, the regional, the hub for the airlines, that, and also uh, that's the, the transport infrastructures and the connectivity and the energy infrastructure. Energy, especially with the, uh, the new energy, and uh, improve the international, the communication, communication connected uh, to uh, this, and develop the, uh, the, the so-called e-commerce, e and then it can pose the, uh, the innovation. So the, the cyber, the plus, and uh, for, for China, the e-commerce, e you know, increased dramat dramatically. Like uh, we have in China, we even create a new holiday, new festival in the December, no sorry, November 11, 1111. So 1111, what does it mean in the past? You, call, you are single, well, you, you don't have girlfriends, boyfriends, and what can you do is just online, online to water shopping. So now everybody on shopping, yes, for, for, that, for that day and uh, for last year, last year, this, uh, the, the sales of e-commerce of Alibaba, one day with six billion US dollar, six billion US dollar in, in China. So it makes the, 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 the big potential. And, uh, and for trade, so uh, China proposed that the open to trade and investment. So we have lots of uh, the free talks, the, for folks, the trade investment, and also China, we, uh, we uh, propose uh, China's international production capacity cooperation scheme, and uh, let this the, the ten, identify 10 areas for the internet cooperation, like steel, non fabric metals, the building materials, the uh, railway, the electricity, the chemical, textile, the, uh, the light industry, the auto, automobile, the communications, machinery, aviation, and the shipbuilding, and the ocean engineering. So this the, identify these 10 areas to first this, the international uh, the cooperation. Um, um, so this is the for trade investment. Uh, uh, so we see that there is the possibility for China-Georgia investment. Um, and uh, the financial integration and the, the, the further, well, the uh, cooperation, new financial system, and uh, establish new financial institutions, the bond market in Asia, and the financial regulation and the cooperation, and the public private partnership. And for, for, for this regard, um, China uh, helped to establish a new development bank called Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank and with the totally 100 billion US dollars as the stock capital. So this will be complementary to the World Bank, to the uh, well, Asian Development Bank, for the European Development Bank. So uh, uh, Georgia is the funding member of, of these uh, 57 members. And uh, uh, so this will concentrate on the infrastructure development. Um, AIB and uh, and other, others, we have also other like uh, the Silk Road Fund with the uh, six, 60 billion, billion US dollars, um, and, and also among others. Um, so uh, China also worked hard for our currency, RMB, to join the special joint rights in the International Monetary Fund, and now it's ranked number three in the US dollar, Euro, and China RMB Yen, and the, uh, Great Britain pound and uh, Japanese yen, so that's totally five. And uh, so uh, the, the, the president of IMF, uh, Lacarte, has praised China's uh, role as the, uh, you know, for the uh, enrich the international financial system and also the, the reform of the financial system. And uh, the most important, that the, uh, the benefits the people, so people to people bond this the uh, through education, the culture, tourism, science, and the technology, health, employment, communication. Through these uh, tunnels, that's the uh, can um, uh, bring together the people and uh, provide public support on the implement this the initiative. So, so we are we are very happy 
we, we have this, the, um, um, so from Chinese side, we have bilateral, multilateral, and the international, you know, the forum to support this, this program. And uh, this is uh, according to the uh, arrangement. And uh, for China's regional, uh, in the pursuing this open up, we can see we China northwest to, to Russia, to the northeast, to, to north, far east of uh, Russia, and also to Japan. And uh, for Silk Road to the west, to the uh, uh, Kazakhstan and uh, to the uh, to Middle Asia. And we have used the uh, Yangtze River Belt to the west and to the south, to the southeast, to with the uh, Asians, Asian countries. And, uh, and then we across the coastal to open open the, the, uh, through the maritime to the either to the west or to the south. So for China, with the uh, the new round of the reform of the and the openness. So so this is a uh, well a, a strategy for for China for the further development and the, and the reform. And this connected with China's you know the, uh, the openness with you know the Silk Road and also with well, the um, Africa, with, with the Africa, we have uh, uh, also a new proposal for, uh, we call it the San Wang Yihua, for the trans, you know, transportation, upgrading the road, railway, and islands, and also the industrialization of the construction material and, and um, others, the you know, basic industries, to help the, well, the Africa to develop with the uh, Science and technology and the industrial park for this uh, industrialization, industrialization, not to export goods to Africa, but help Africa country to produce locally and export to its region. So, so this is the, the this is a new development, and uh, and for the jo China and Georgia cooperation, uh, for my understanding, China and Georgia now. Negotiate for the free trade agreement. Free trade agreements. Since our colleagues, we uh, we, we conduct the feasibility study for the the MOFCOM, and we have uh, uh, the regular talk with the uh, the Georgia ambassador to China and uh, a professor of the International Black University, and um, and for for UIB and also the international IBUSU. That's we are. Both of us are international universities, so we can work together, create a platform for, for the faculty exchange, joint research, and also student exchange. So we are, we are casually to invite the, stu the students to visit Beijing, to visit our university, spend your time with us as uh, exchange students, or even you can pursue the degree program, the master and the PhD. So we will do our efforts to help you to, to do this because you know, the young people represent the future of these two countries. Well, that's my uh, presentation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear guests, on behalf of Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I'm uh, extremely pleased to address you on the 11th uh, International Silk Road Conference. Mm, uh, I, in view of the main theme of the conference, innovations in uh, business, education, and science, I would like to briefly mm, discuss new Silk Road Belt and uh, Road strategy, opportunities it brings, and how it will affect trade between Georgia and uh, Chinese uh, Repub uh, People's Republic of China, as well and as well as what are the innovations and. Uh, the new developments in, in this regard. First of all, uh, to fully grasp uh, the dimensions of the Belt and Road strategy, we would keep in mind um, uh, the role and function of Georgia in the historic Silk Road um, uh, area. As a uh, mm, crossroad, uh, we are east meets west, uh, connecting these two great civilizations and Georgia as an integral uh, cultural and economic center. In view of economic integration and globalization, uh, via trade and economic uh, cooperation between countries are of crucial importance, the new, new Silk Road is one of the priority tasks of the Georgian government. The Belt and Road strategy is uh, shall promote cooperation between Georgia and China 
in areas of transport, communication, infrastructure, trade, energy, and industry. Uh, one of the notable developments of the uh, recent years is the establishment of the Silk Road, uh, um, in, uh, Silk Road Chamber of uh, International Commerce. Um, I would like to, it is noteworthy that quite recently the Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Industry hosted the big delegation um, of the Silk Road Chamber headed by the president of this chamber, and it was a, um, a road show throughout the region, and the first point was Georgia. Um, Georgia, uh, the president of GCCI, was elected as the vice president of Silk Road Chamber. By the way, the um, president, Nina Cicovani, is on, the, on her way from China. Uh, just now, that's why I, am, I have the honor to address you. Um, the Silk Road Chamber of International Commerce sh shall um, uh, have a great value and uh, impact, uh, increase cooperation opportunities, allow us to bring together businessmen, companies, entrepreneurs, partnerships and development of cooperation in the international commercial uh, network engaged. Uh, with uh, the concept of openness, inclusiveness, development and the vision of uh, globalization, uh, Silk Road Chamber of Co International Commerce will build a, a service platform and cooperation mechanism of equality, efficiency, and uh, pragmatism. F focusing on the strategy of the mm, One Belt, One Road, and the development demands uh, of our member companies, Silk Road Chamber will create a new model, a new platform of international and external exchanges um, uh, of economic and trade cooperation. I will not be long I in uh, my remarks, uh, but I would, uh, it is noteworthy to discuss with you um, absolutely a new uh, E-Silk uh, e Road project. With, uh, the presentation was held in previous months during the visits of the Silk Road Chamber Presidency. E-Silk Road is uh, comprised uh, of silk, uh, e-silk business and social network, offline pro professional network, services, offline export network and services platforms, including uh, international commerce platform, investment and financial services platform, and cultural exchange platform as well. It shall eliminate uh, communication barriers between the cooperations and individuals in the Belt and region, uh, Road region and provide high quality services to the uh, Silk Road and its members. In addition, uh, eSilk uh, has an expert network consisted of academics, scientists, uh, professionals and other industrial experts that can offer integrated consulting services for companies and investors who are uh, interested in conducting businesses and investment in the region. Moreover, uh, eSilk Road provides feasibility analysis and advice on uh, government policies for corporations and institutions through the partnership with the Silk Road Chamber of International Commerce Expert Forum and Silk Road Fund. As a conclusion, uh, I would like once again uh, to emphasize that uh, with the um, introduction of the Belt and Road Strategy, uh, Georgia regains uh, its historical role as the bridge between Europe and uh, Asia. Thank you so much for your attention.